Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Sarah Oblick Spiker. She's a former international athlete, life coach, remote operations specialist, and transformational expert. I have Chuck Groot. He's supposedly retired, but is doing a lot of business consulting and helping people start their businesses. He is known as the success surgeon. And I have Dr. Mohan Ananda. He is a scientist, a lawyer, a serial entrepreneur, and an author. He is helping people succeed in business as well. The question today, how useful is daylight savings time? Mohan, you suggested this topic. I'm going to ask you to kick us off. Yeah, right now, the evenings are shorter. It becomes darker. So it has been bothering me. The fact is, if you look at the history, the daylight saving time did not exist uh, before the World War I. Mm. Uh, at the time of World War I, actually Germany introduced it, first country to introduce, and they introduced it primarily to save fuel because of you know, using energy. Statistically, you can save energy through the daylight saving time. Mm. Then, of course, the British, right after they came on board and they changed it. Then in 1918, the US abroad came on board. Mm. Then what happened was, of course, after some time, they changed it. There is no daylight saving time. Until 1942, they brought it back, the US brought it back. Now, in this country, there are only two states which doesn't have the daylight saving time, which is mm. Hawaii and Arizona. But of do course, they stay on daylight savings time or do they stay on no, standard, no, no, standard time? time. Standard they standard time. stay on standard time. They don't okay. have daylight saving time. Okay. And also Puerto Rico, US Virgin Islands. Standard time has been the, the, the normal. The standard. <laughs> That's now, the daylight saving time is actually a little bit more now from March through November. Mm -hmm. And, and wow. November through March is the, the standard time. Uh, there has been a, a lot of activities. Everybody wants to actually go back to daylight saving time full time. Mm -hmm. that's, in fact, there are many legislation, except the Congress has in past. That's why it's not happened yet. But they are always talking about it because the real problem is the changing time. Mm -hmm. Right, the changing back and forth. Back and forth is the, it's, it's painful. However, the interesting aspect is the American Association of Sleep Medicine, they recommend the standard time to be better for health conditions. Mm -hmm. However, the economic community or the, the others, business people, they want daylight saving time. Actually, there are evidence for re reduced crime, reduced accidents, reduced, you know, all kind of bad things and people enjoy uh, more restaurant time, more business shopping and all during this daylight saving time. But it's still a little you know, confusing in the sense which way they will go. But everybody really thinks that daylight saving is better than standard. But the, the medical group, they don't agree with that. I think that might be the first time I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do have to um, admit that um, the older that I get and the more freedom that I create in business for myself and in schedule, the more I'm able to be in my natural rhythm. And I notice how miserable I get for a couple of weeks in fall when I still wake up in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And that said, I was just noticing yesterday when I was already wrapping things up, I was like, oh, it's the end of the day. And I'm like, oh, well, not yet. The time's not saying the end of the day yet, but it's dark outside. I'm in New York, so we are in that area that gets early sunrise regardless. I know the more you move towards the West, even with the same time zone, there's going to be delays and differences. Yes, we're in Vanc uh, Victoria, British Columbia, which is on the West Coast. So we're on the Pacific time. Uh, the last couple of years, speaking about how you feel and grumpiness, uh, I've really noticed how long it took me to adjust to even a one hour change. And I remember many years ago talking to a group of people and they had just come from Toronto to Calgary and he was saying, oh, jet lag, three hours. I said, well, that's nothing. I mean, I just got back from Europe and that's eight hours. Now, one hour is killing me. So <laughs> my grumpy zone's a little longer than yours, Sarah. So I, I'm, I'm lucky. You're lucky. It's also been a topic of great debate here in British Columbia uh, because there's been a big push because people don't like those changes. They like 
having something s- solid and just go with the flow. Uh, there's been a lot of debates, like Mohan said, uh, over the years of what who's got the right choices. We all have a basic circadian rhythm in us, which is based with thousands of years of of uh, you know genetics. The biggest challenge, and and Mohan hit it right on the head, is that BC won't change, and they they legislated a change two years ago, but they said it's predicated on Washington, Oregon, and California changing. Oh, because we've got the Concaf corridor, right? The uh, Columbia corridor, uh, which is a huge uh, uh, business lane. Um, again. Time is a construct of our mind. So, you know, whether I go across a line and it's an hour different, okay, it's an hour different. We can, we can accommodate for that. So that's my initial two cents worth. Yeah, I kind of agree. I'm like, I don't really care, but just pick one. But to your point, Sarah, I also live on the east side of a, of a time zone. So it doesn't make that much difference. If I had to vote, I would say I would rather it be dark in the morning and be lighter later into the evening. For me, because to you, also to your point, Sarah, I about three thirty in the afternoon. I'm like, oh, let's wrap it up. It's starting to get dark now. It's the day's over. Oh wait, it's three thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> so that would be my vote. But I don't care. Just pick one. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. I think uh, my, but I prefer the daylight saving time as around the clock. But that is the being currently in the legislation. So it is with the. Uh, Congress has to, uh, you know, make that decision, but they are debating between the so-called the, the health care industry as well as the, the business industry. So there's a little conflict. So they haven't made up mind, but the change is making worse. It's, it's, it's actually a lot of, especially young people, there is a psychological impact. They went to the right after the change because it becomes dark earlier in the evening. So if they, once they pick one, whether it's standard time, or the, the saving time, then I think that there won't be change and then everybody will get used to it and things will be, you know, okay. But that's the, the issue. I, I don't know whether it will happen, but every time people talk about it, but people are postponing the decision making. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know Europe is moving clocks, I think about a week before the States. Week or two. So yeah. that's in addition confusion for everybody who works across time zones and cross continents. Like, wait, where are we this time? Oh, wait, what? <laughs> but it just it feels just so absurd how time as a construct can be decided just by a handful of people who hold power. Um, so you wonder what's going to be next. They're going to decide the the Earth should be moving the other direction. <laughs> 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 that we don't like how it spins. I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I did, I sent out a link when I sent out this topic that talked about how if you don't change the time zone, how there are parts of the world who will end up with it, the sun won't come up till like 930 in the morning, which seems absurd. But if that's the reality, I guess that's the reality. I don't know how those people would feel about not changing. We don't have anybody that's in those little slices of the world on this call. Yeah, for example, I, we were in Norway. Uh, a few years back in a place called Tromso. Tromso is uh, above the Arctic Circle. And it, we were in August that time. The August is 24 hours of sunlight. So it's, it doesn't make any difference. So, but of course the clock is same, but but the sunlight is only back in the, the nighttime when you want to sleep. You, t- you need to have a thick drain to close it down. Otherwise it'll be so bright. So and it doesn't matter what time it is. Yeah, <laughs> I've been in Norway during the midnight sun as well, and it's very weird. Yeah, but at the same time, the, the time the, in the winter months, it doesn't make any difference. It's always dark. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think the U.S. should pick one. And if I have a choice, I would pick daylight, daylight saving time because it's a little bit more you know, convenient. But even if it's a standard time, don't change it. Keep it everything. Like Arizona is a standard time. It's always there. And Hawaii is a standard time. So they both have that same one time. But yeah. anyway, I don't know whether it will happen. I think that's a pretty common thing. I don't care. Just pick one. I don't want to switch back and forth. So that is our 10 minutes. I'll cut us up there. Thank you for having this weird and abstract conversation about time and daylight savings time with me. I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon. Thanks a lot. Robert. Thank you.